That's like saying a man jumping into a swimming pool full of ice and alcohol might feel a sense of coolness. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome back to the program, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out once again with you and a great guest coming up, a frequent guest. Uh, Mr. Kim Anderson is going to come on in just a few minutes. But first, want to pause and remind you, of course, about three great companies out there helping you to do more, helping you to be a better appraiser, helping you to be informed. One of those, of course, is Working RE Magazine, helping you to know what's going on in the appraisal industry. Folks, if you have not signed up for their free newsletter, you need to go to workingre.com and sign up at uh, at their website and put your email address in there, folks. Trust me, it's worth it. Data Master, saving time, saving money for appraisers. Yes, they are continuing to expand and work with great companies across the nation to help you to be better at what you do, to do more with technology. It's datamasterusa.com, datamasterusa.com. Finally, a la mode, something I use nearly every day of my life. A la mode is helping me to do more uh, out in the field, mobile tools and in the office, all kinds of tools that they've built into their software that will help you to do better at what you do, to be better at what you do. It's alamode.com or 800 alamode. Well, folks, I want to welcome back to the program uh, a great friend of mine and uh, somebody, of course, that uh, uh, has been on the program many, many times. His name is Mr. Tim Anderson. He is the appraiser's advocate, uh, and he is here to answer some questions. Tim, welcome back to the program, my friend. Justin, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the invitation. Please oh, let me extend my best to you and your family. Thank you. Well, it, it, it feels like it's been forever uh, since you and I have, have really talked, and I'm really grateful to have you back on the program because I've got a couple questions on the table. I want to set this up for the viewer or for the uh, listeners, rather, um, to remind them that uh, on a regular basis, you and I come on. I would guess it happens about once a month uh, where we talk about questions that come from listeners, individuals who have serious and honest questions about uh, USPAP, about how they perform their uh, business as appraisers. And uh, the two questions that, uh, that have come up today, I think, are going to be good ones. So are you ready, my friend? Let's go, Dustin. We're ready to go. All right. I'm going to set up this first question uh, with a quick story, a funny story. I think I may have told it on on uh, this podcast in the past, um, but I was driving around with one of my trainees the other day, and, um, and uh, he told me a story about how he had knocked on the wrong door. Uh, they had gone to the door. He knocked on the door. He asked, you know, you said he was there for the appraisal and blah, blah, blah. And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, it was funny back and forth. And he said, he said, uh, Dustin, what if I had actually done the appraisal? What if, I, what if, what if she had let me in and I'd done the appraisal and I not realized? And I said, well, my friend, it's happened before. Uh, and I said, I'll even one up you uh, years ago. And this was back prior uh, to HVCC. This was back prior to the 2008 uh, quote unquote housing collapse. Um, but it was when we were, you know, on a regular basis collecting at the door, CODs. And I said, not only did I walk through a property, not only did I measure the outside and walk through a property, of course, you know, at the invitation of the individual that was there, but I collected a check for my time, uh, got back to the car, and I, I have a habit of uh, entering that check into the system so that it shows that it's paid. As I'm looking at the check number, I realize that the name on the check is not the name of the borrower. And then I recognize that the address on the check is not the address of the uh, subject. And I realized that the subject was next door, that I had just done a full inspection, a complete walkthrough, and collected money at the door uh, before I realized that I was at the wrong property. I went back, to, of course, to the door, knocked on the door. And the first thing I said to this uh, lovely lady was, uh, you really ought to be more careful about who you give money to. And she looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I said, uh, I was at the wrong place. And she goes, oh, well, I just figured my husband set this thing up. <laughs> so I, I set that up, Tim, because the question that comes from one of our listeners has to do with COD. This is something collecting at the door that we used to do all of the time. And the question came back, um, and I'm just going to paraphrase it, uh, but this individual wrote to me and said, uh, Dustin, I, uh, I just got an assignment to do an appraisal for a lender. This is not a private appraisal. I want to make that very clear. This is a lender. Uh, and they asked me to collect at the door. I didn't think that that was possible. Now, I know this may not necessarily be a quote unquote use PAP um, question. And I know we're here on the Dear Use Pap uh, instructor uh, episode today, Tim, but uh, I would love to hear your expertise and your answer to can we as appraisers for lending purposes collect at the door? Fortunately, Dustin, yes, we can. There's absolutely <laughs> nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Okay. Uh, 
I'm sorry. You said, unfortunately, why? Uh, well, uh, because uh, a lot of appraisers don't understand that that's perfectly fine. And so you know, go for it. Uh, fortunately, uh, USPAP doesn't stick its nose into our business. So it doesn't care what we charge. It doesn't care to whom we charge it. Uh, it doesn't care who writes the check. Uh, if you want to get paid in you know, fresh eggs, fine, that's up to you. Get paid in fresh eggs. But uh, it's perfectly acceptable to accept a fee at the door, especially when the client says, appraiser, please collect the fee at the door. It's yours. And then do with it as you will. Cash it quickly right. to make sure that those funds are there. Don't know. That, that's absolutely perfectly uh, ex acceptable in this situation uh, you cited where the clients had collected the door. If the client didn't say collect at the door, then probably you'd not even worry about it. You would just uh, do what you typically do, which is mm -hmm. send the appraisal in with an invoice and then get paid in the next billing cycle, what you always do. But no, it, that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, jump all over it. Uh, get, get, get all those checks at the door. You possibly can. <laughs> well, this, uh, and, and let me, uh, let me dive a little deeper into this, Tim, and I appreciate your answer. Uh, your answer, of course, is that uh, USPAP says nothing about the fee, much less, you know, how you receive it or what you receive it in. Uh, I think the question from the listener is, is uh, a good question in the sense that, as I alluded to with my story in the beginning, Tim, this used to be something that was quite frequent. In fact, I would say uh, prior to HVCC and, uh, of course, what then became Dodd-Frank, uh, it was probably more common, I'm guessing, if I remember correctly. It's been a few years, but I think it was more common for us to collect a check from the borrower at the door at the time of the inspection than it wasn't, meaning we, we collected more checks at the door than we didn't. Uh, that we actually had to bill for. And frankly, I liked that uh, because it cut out the middleman. It, you know, I could, I could uh, have a check in the morning and it could be deposited in the afternoon, uh, but that doesn't happen anymore. And, and I guess that is my follow-up question, Tim. And, and, and I apologize if I'm putting you on the spot because maybe you don't even know the answer to this, but why not? Why is it that we went from almost everything that we did was collected at the door to almost nothing is collected at the door when it comes to lender work? And Dustin, do you really want my theory on the intrusiveness <laughs> of the federal government? <laughs> really? We don't have that much time. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> we, we, just, we just went that way, Dustin. That's just, that's just the way things, the way things rolled out. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. No, and, and, and I, and I hear you. I mean, in fact, my, my answer back to this individual, and hopefully I, uh, I it sounds like I, my answer was okay. Um, my answer back to this individual was, you know, it's a great question and I know it's not something that's normal anymore, but it is a myth that we cannot collect at the door. I would guess, and, and tell me what your thoughts are on this. And I think, you know, this is strictly opinion. I know you've already answered the question, but strictly opinion. I'm guessing, Tim, that some of this has to do with the fact that, uh, of course, HVCC and Dodd-Frank have something to do with talking about uh, colluding, talking about coercion, talking about, you know, a lot of different things that they're trying uh, to avoid. And I wonder, I'm just guessing here, but I'm wondering if they thought that maybe the collection at the door could be seen as, you know, hey, uh, you know, here's here's a $400 appraisal, um, you know, I'm going to pay you a little bit extra. You know, I think that what they're probably trying to do is avoid any, um, uh, uh, even even the presence or the uh, um, the thought of there being some kind of coercion. What are your thoughts on that? Let's see, Dustin, the government, coercion, <laughs> and honesty. Yeah, those go together <laughs> really right, well. Fair yeah. Right. I mean, let's see. The, the AMC calls you up and says, Dustin, I want you to do this one for free. But if we like what you do, we're going to pay you a premium on everyone you do for us after that. No, there's no collusion there whatsoever. <laughs> there's no influence there whatsoever. No, that would never happen, Dustin. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah, and, and, now, and now people know why I love talking to, to Mr. Tim Anderson. Tim Anderson, of course, is the appraiser's advocate. And uh, we have another question coming up from our great listeners uh, right after the break. I want to pause here and remind you that we are sponsored by three companies that continue to support appraisers to continue to make your life better. One of them, of course, is Working RE Magazine. Folks, did you know that every year, Working RE, speaking of fees, Working RE does a fee survey. What does that mean? Well, they survey appraisers across the nation. And when my clients who come to me for coaching say, Dustin, I really don't even know where to start when it comes to fees. Am I too high? Am I too low? Uh, do I, you know, how am I competing with my, with my fellow appraisers? Well, folks, there's a couple of different ways to figure that out. And one of the easiest is to go to workingre.com and in the search bar, just type in fee, F-E-E, -E, survey, fee survey. And you will find the latest survey from across the country and very specific to your area. Yes. Uh, now, it may not necessarily be your tiny town, uh, like I live in a town of 3,000, but at least it will include the area 
that I appraise in. And you'll have at least a pretty good idea as to where your colleagues, your peers are when it comes to fees. That's workingre.com, workingre.com. All the mode, of course, is the software that uh, I continue to use, folks. And trust me, when I when I say I, I use all the mode, it's not a decision that I've made in a vacuum. I look consistently, constantly at other programs out there. I want what is best for me, what is best for my business. And trust me, sponsorship aside, if I found something better, that is the direction that I would go. It is more important for me to not keep sponsorship, but to be effective and efficient at what I do at my appraisal business. And yet, looking outside, I continue to come back to Alamo. Folks, they're the ones that have the tools that will help you to do what you need to do. Alamo.com, A-L-A-M-O-D-E.com or 800 Alamo. Speaking of technology and speaking of moving forward in this rapidly changing world of appraisal, Data Master is right on board with that. Folks, you know that they have been uh, bought out, if you will, uh, by class appraisals. And I know class, I work for class, and I, of course, utilize uh, Data Master. Uh, a great partnership moving forward in helping appraisers to be able to do more with less in this rapidly changing world. Folks, if you are not part of the Data Master team, I would highly recommend that you take a peek. And if you've looked at it in the past, I would ask you to look again. This is powerful software that will save you 30 to 60 minutes on every single appraisal report that you do. You can find out more at datamasterusa.com. Again, datamasterusa.com. All right, folks, welcome back to the program. We are uh, talking with Mr. Tim Anderson, the appraiser's advocate. Tim, I want to tell you a quick story. I was on uh, a uh, accountability call this morning. Uh, so this is a, a six-week call that I make between my mastermind meetings. So we meet in a room every three months, uh, every quarter as a mastermind. And then halfway between the, the physical in-presence meetings, we have a Zoom meeting. It's an accountability session. It's me, to, it's me and, and individuals in that mastermind sitting down and saying, okay, six weeks ago, here are the four goals that you set. How are you doing? Uh, are you accomplishing those things? Are you are you getting to where you need to go? And uh, I was in one of those this uh, this morning and uh, talking with individuals. And one of these individuals uh, is both a client of mine as a mastermind student and a client of yours, uh, an individual that uh, has had a bit of uh, some struggle, if you will, with the state board. And uh, he could not say enough good about Mr. Tim Anderson. Will you tell us more, Tim, about the services that you provide for individuals who might get that nasty letter from the state board? Dustin, thank you. The uh, state boards send the appraisers uh, nasty letters. And a lot <laughs> yes, of <I> times, <laughs> a lot of times the appraiser really doesn't know how to answer. So they get in touch with me. I help them from an appraisal standpoint. I recommend they get in touch with uh, their e &O people to bring them up to speed with what's going on. If they need it, I'm happy to get them in touch with, uh, with an administrative law attorney to help fight the issue. But basically, uh, uh, Dustin, it's, uh, there, there's nobody looking out for the appraiser. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, that's what I do. I'm the appraiser's advocate. And I like to think that I'm providing a service that appraisers need and uh, that it, it is a timely service and one that is going to help them practice real estate appraisal professionally. So, uh, yeah, since I don't appraise anymore, since I'm retired, uh, this is what I do. And it, it, it's a lot of fun. Thank you for asking. Well, and, and as one that has utilized your services, I can highly recommend them. Uh, people need to know that this is not a free service, um, but it is a valuable service. And when I say valuable, to me, that that word means something. You know, I used to I used to be very famous for saying, go create some value. Well, folks, Tim Anderson is creating value for appraisers every single day, because if you find yourself on, on the wrong side of a state board investigation, um, it is a joy to work with somebody like Tim who knows their stuff, who can get in contact or help you get in contact with the individuals who can help you through that uh, situation. But another thing that Tim does is he helps to prepare against that kind of thing. And another service that I've utilized is to, despite any outstanding state board investigations, if you will, uh, having a sample or two or three to send to Tim where he can look through your reports and say, you know what, let me show you some things that might help you uh, to avoid problems in the future. Tim, how do people get a hold of you to, uh, to utilize this type of service? Dustin, thank you. My email address is tim at theappraisersadvocate.com. And if somebody will get in touch with me, I'll respond and we'll, uh, we'll work out a number of uh, the number of reports to send uh, what uh, they want me to look for. Is it just, you know, logic and reasoning? Is it USPAP compliance? Is it the whole thing? Uh, uh, we, we worked that out at the beginning. And then uh, I'll go over the reports. I provide the appraiser with a lot of notes. And then we have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting. 
so that we can go over this stuff so that the appraiser can ask me the questions. And uh, if appraisers say, Tim, really, is that what USPAP says? Then I can say, sure, it's right here. Here's the here's the standard rule and here's the book and page. And, right. and um, yeah, this is exactly what it is and this is what it means. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Tim, let's dig back into the Dear USPAP Instructor episode with another question from one of our wonderful listeners out there. And, and I, I guess this is kind of a retro day today because I'm going back in time previous to HVCC again to set this one up. Uh, and Tim, as you know, it was pretty common practice, uh, though never acceptable, but pretty common practice before you know 2008 uh, to do uh, or have lenders do what's called a comp check. They would reach out to appraisers and say, hey, uh, I've got a, a property, one, two, three, any street needs appraised. Uh, could you comp it out for me real quick and tell me about where it's going to come in so that we know whether to, uh, you know, to, uh, to put forth the uh, appraisal engagement letter. Now, of course, I never did any of that. <clears throat> Uh, I would never uh, involve myself in something like that. <clears throat> and I am grateful for the uh, the uh, um, uh, the statute of limitations <laughs> as far as as far as things go. But, you know, Tim, it was very common practice for that to happen. Obviously, those things don't happen <clears throat> at all anymore. Uh, but I did have a question from one of the listeners who reached out and said, listen, I just had a lender come to me and ask me if they could do this when they order an appraisal. Can they send potential comps um, that they want considered in the appraisal? Uh, what say you, Tim? Well, of course they can. I mean, they can send over apple pies if they want to. Uh, but then you have the choice of either eating it or not. Uh, but they can send over all the comps in the world. And if USPAP makes it very clear. Fannie Mae makes it very clear. Freddie Mac makes it very clear. FHA makes it very clear that the appraiser chooses the comps, not the lender, not the AMC, not the homeowner. So yeah, the lender, could, the lender, the broker, the whomever can send over whatever it is they want to. Uh, but the... Uh, and unless I miss my guess, it's not a crime to slap a stamp on a couple of comps and send them over to the appraiser. Right. Uh, the problem comes when the appraiser says, oh, well, I guess they sent these over. I guess I better use these. Well, no, that's not the point. The, it's the appraiser's appraisal. The appraiser signs the certification. And if uh, uh, I, I highly recommend appraisers read standard rule 2-3 in its entirety. Because that's the certification standard. Yep. That's what the appraiser certifies to with every appraisal that goes out, excuse me, every appraisal report that goes out the door. And uh, the appraiser certifies to uh, two areas that are really important. Number one, the appraiser certifies that every statement of fact in that appraisal report is true and correct. And then the appraiser certifies that he or she followed USPAP in coming up with that value conclusion. Got so it, standard it. rule 1-4 makes it very clear that the appraiser must collect, uh, verify, and analyze all information necessary for credible assignment results. So if the broker, the lender, the AMC, the homeowner, um, the Uber guy that drives you over there gives you some comps, look at them, analyze them. If they're good, use them. If they're not, don't use them. It's that simple. You like apple pie, eat it. You don't like apple pie, don't eat it. <laughs> All right. it, it this is really not difficult. Okay. Well, let me let me let me make it a little more difficult. Uh, everything you said, I think, uh, is is spot on. I really do. Uh, I think it's an easier question when it comes to say a homeowner or probably more frequently a realtor or a real estate agent meeting you at the uh, appraisal and handing you a set of quote what they call quote unquote comps. Now, I like to make it in a very kind and professional manner. Um, you know, with respect to who I'm speaking to, I like to educate a little bit and say, you know, uh, you know, you call them comps, uh, but they are sales and it really is up to the appraiser whether they are uh, quote unquote comparable or become comps. Uh, and we usually have a nice uh, discussion about that when they use the term comps. I don't think anybody would argue uh, about anything that you're saying, Tim, when it comes to any, any individual handing you a, a set of paperwork and saying, hey, I want you to consider this. Is it different though when it's the lender? Is it different when, and especially when it's the lender prior prior to the report being turned in. It's one thing to go back with a revision request, right? An, an ROV, but it's very, it feels different when upfront they say, I want you to appraise one, two, three, three, any street, and here's four sales that I want you to consider. It was real simple, Dustin. You fill the form out and then you send it back to them without a certification and a signature and say, you sign it. <laughs> done, done. I love it. You probably won't get another assignment from them, but hey, okay. maybe, and, maybe you don't and, want. And, and then that will be, that, and then you will follow that up with a note that will contain two words. The second one is you, and the first one isn't thank. <laughs> I love it, my friend. I love it, my friend. And in, in all serious, in all seriousness, though, um, do you find that it's different when it comes from the lender? I mean, do you, it kind of feels like coercion. It kind of does. I mean, it, it would be hard. Uh, to kind of feels like coercion. <laughs> that's, that's like saying a man jumping into a swimming pool full of ice and alcohol might feel a sense of coolness. 
<laughs> All right, fair enough. So technically, <laughs> if I if I could repeat back what you're saying, technically, uh, there's nothing wrong with a lender sending over uh, sales that they want you to consider, but tread carefully. Extremely so. No, extremely so. Okay, fair enough. Well, Tim, it, as always, it has been a pleasure to have you on the program. You are very intelligent, witty, uh, fun to be with, and I appreciate your friendship, my friend. Dustin, thank you. And please let me express the same to you and my best, as always, to your family. And uh, I know that uh, uh, you you and your son are, uh, went through a moving experience recently, and I <laughs> yes, hope you can did. recover from it quickly. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, we will upward and onward. And, and I can't wait um, to have a couple other questions for you at our next meeting. Remember, listeners, if you have any questions about USPAP or about how uh, we conduct business as appraisers, reach out to us. Uh, either reach out to Tim, uh, who is uh, Tim at theappraisersadvocate.com or myself, uh, the coach at theappraisercoach.com. We would be happy to answer your questions very quickly. And and then, uh, as you can see, uh, use them on the air as well uh, to help others to get the answers to their questions as well. Uh, Tim, thank you. And we'll see you next time, my friend. Dustin, thank you. My best as always. I appreciate it. It's good to speak with you. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.